Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas, one last time for this season of Christmas as we look forward to the season of Epiphany moving into this new year. Happy New Year as well. So what did you get for Christmas? Did you get anything that uh, was really special this year? Did you get anything that you were hoping for? That's always kind of a conversation when you go back to school for our kids, isn't it? Well, what'd you get for Christmas? Did you get, uh, did you get the new toy? Did you get uh, a new pair of shoes? What, what was it that you got? Were you happy? Were you disappointed? What were the blessings that were given to you this Christmas? Like it or not, gifts are a part of our Christmas tradition. And what we do with those gifts and how we see those gifts is always an important thing. In our Old Testament reading for this morning, we get a story that is quite familiar, hopefully. Uh, A story, at least in its general way, is talked a lot about uh, in Sunday school and things like that, where Solomon is asked by God, ask me whatever you want and I will give it to you. And so Solomon asks for wisdom. He asks for the ability to discern what is good and bad. He asks for this ability to rule as a good king. This was what he asked for. Yet the story of Solomon, if it ended there, would be one to be rejoiced about, but sadly it continues with Solomon's own demise. At the end of the very reading we heard this morning, it says this, And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Solomon is blessed with a discerning mind or a wise mind in the world. Yet his wisdom could not save him. Because in the end, Solomon would end up turning to idols, allowing for false worship to rule in his house. Now, we do not know Solomon's eternal standing before God, but we do know plenty about his grievous sins that were committed because he violated the commands of God and he turned to idolatry. The asking for wisdom is held up as a good thing. And I would affirm that. Is it not good for God's people to be wise? Is it not good for us to know the difference between right and wrong? Should we not ask for a discerning spirit when we engage with the word of God and the world around us? But how do we consider these gifts that are given? What I want us to consider this morning is the proper place for the good gifts of God. Solomon's wisdom was a gift from God, yet even this good gift that was given to him would be used for selfish gain. It ended up destroying so much. So what did you get for Christmas? What have you been blessed with from God? There are so many things in our lives that can be true blessings from God, yet it is the tendency of our sinful hearts to turn those blessings into something that becomes curses and can even undermine faith. It's simply the same story, yet a different day. For Solomon, we heard how this went from good and God was happy that he asked for this, yet the end is not so good. In the same way, God created the garden good. He created all of creation good. And Adam and Eve used God's good creation to be twisted in upon itself and it became used to curse. That is the nature of sin. Taking God's good gifts and using them how they were never intended to be used, and they become curses rather than blessings from God. Solomon's wisdom, Solomon's wealth, all of these things ended up becoming 
something that would hinder him. Wisdom, wealth, and women were the downfall of Solomon because they all led him to idolatry. It is, easy, it is always easier to see God's hand in things as we look back on our lives. It is easier to see how God has protected us and preserved us over the years when we look back over our life, oftentimes rather than when we are in the moment. I remember back when I was younger and uh, a little bit more into uh, my advancement in baseball, I would pray to God for very what I thought to be good things. I wanted God to bless me and give me the ability to succeed at this game that I loved so dearly. I wanted to be able to use that gift in order to, let's be honest, get quite a bit of money. But I was going to use that money to bless the people around me. I was going to use that money, hopefully, to glorify God in all that I did. Yet I truly believe it to be a blessing that God did not answer my prayer in the way that I desired. You see, looking back on it, I was neither prepared in any way, shape, or form to handle that amount of blessing from God. I was not prepared to do those types of things, and I truly believe it would have led to my demise rather than for the glorification of God. I'm glad where I stand today. As sinners, we all can take that which is an amazing blessing and turn it into our own destruction. In my own circles of my fellow brothers who are in the ministry, I have seen many who have gone up and down all around for so many different reasons. Some due to the circumstances that they found themselves in, Yet one that I was not prepared to watch, many of my friends and colleagues struggle with, was not a difficult situation in the sense that um, there was a problem in the church, but rather what I was surprised to see is the amount of people who tend to struggle not with failure, but rather with success. When you look at a ministry and you see it booming, you see it growing, and the people around you say, oh, they're, they're doing something right. They are doing something that should be replicated all over the place. That leader must be doing the things that God wants him to do. And he may very well be doing those things. Yet what oftentimes comes of that is a sense of pride, a sense of yeah, I am doing these great things. All when the prayer started with, God, simply let the people hear your word, your gospel, and your saving grace around me. Bring them to this place. The temptation is always to believe that it has something to do with the individual rather than what it is all about, and that is the work of God. Solomon received wisdom. It was good. It was right. It was the ability to discern right from wrong and rule with godly character. Yet that turned in on itself over time. And the blessing was turned in to a curse. In our gospel lesson, we hear about wisdom. Yet this is not wisdom of Solomon. This is not wisdom of simply man. This is the wisdom that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ grew in. The end of the text says this in verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This verse can catch us off guard sometimes thinking that Jesus, he grew he grew in wisdom. He didn't know everything from the time that he was a baby. No, in his humanity, he learned just as we learn. He grew and he walked in God's commandments. This wisdom was not tainted with sin, though. This wisdom was perfect wisdom, not like the wisdom of Solomon that was a gift from God, yet was tainted by Solomon's own sin. 
and used for his own desires in the end. What we see in Christ is that he is the perfect one in light of so many who had failed before him and for so many who would fail after him. Solomon was said to be simply a young child and was given wisdom, yet it did not bring about good. And here we see Christ, who is also a young child, was growing in wisdom and would lead, and it would lead to the good of all people. Solomon was given honor and power, and it led to his demise. Christ had all power and deserved all honor, yet he did not use it for himself, yet he sought to use it for those around him. Jesus knew what he had he understood what it was to be used for. For the saving of humanity. For the love and care of the people around him. These were the things that his wisdom, his honor, his power to be, were to be used for. I think one of the hardest things for us in our lives today is watching people's strength and power and wisdom fade away. When our loved ones get to that point in their life where their sharp minds fade, their strength of body is fading, and even that glimmer in their eye seems to be departing. This is one of the things that is one of the most challenging things for people to walk through. But when we trust not in our own strength, when we trust not in the wisdom of the individual, but rather in the wisdom and strength and power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we can know that he holds that one close. He can know, or he holds each and every one of us close. Not because we are wise, not because we are strong, not because we have done everything we have supposed to have done, but rather because he is gracious and loving to each and every one of us. This seems counter to wisdom, but the reality is God works in a way that is counter to human wisdom. Hear these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful, not many of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is lowly and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. If you find yourself standing on anything but Jesus, if you find yourself drawing your own confidence from anything but Jesus, take heed lest you fall. Solomon gives us a wonderful example of the abundant blessings that we can receive from God. But if our trust is in the blessings, we will truly fall flat on our face, just like Solomon. If our trust is in our own wisdom, we will fall. If our trust is in our own wealth and power, we will not stand before God. But if our trust is in the one, who is the true manifestation of wisdom, who became weak that you might become strong, then we will stand. Then we will stand boldly, not because of us, but because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that you would not waver from this true wisdom of salvation, 
that is in the crucified and risen Lord, your Savior, your wisdom. This is what we stand on. This is what we cling to. Hell is filled with people who were thought to be wise. Let us rather be fools for Christ and cling to him all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen.